Hey guys and girls, my name's Dan, welcome back to The Forge. In this episode of Trust Me, I'm a blacksmith. Let's finish this wine steak and uh, talk about finishing. Okay, so this is the final episode for this video uh, series. Um, this is the wine steak that we've been making. Basically a bottle of wine sits in here and then two wine glasses are going to sit on the end here. This is a bit of a prototype. Um, so after we finish today, I might do a bit more, to do a bit more fettling and stuff. If I do anything serious, I might make another episode, but um, I doubt that that will happen. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to rivet this together, uh, we're going to sort this little foot out to hide, hold the wine bottle, we're going to bend these arms up and then we're going to bend these arms up to hold the uh, wine glasses. And yeah, that goes in the ground with you on a picnic or whatever and uh, yeah, it's come together, it's looking really, really nice and I'm really, really pleased with the outcome so far. Uh, okay, so I'm going to get on. The first job I'm going to do is to take it apart. I'm going to get the um, get this little bit all sorted out now, the foot all sorted out, and then I'm going to concentrate on doing uh, the rivets. Uh, and then I think once oh no, I'm going to have to bend these bits up as well. So I'll do those bits as well. So um, yeah, cool. Right, see you in a minute. Okay, so I uh, was under the impression that this wine bottle that I was using was slightly undersized, but it would appear that it's not. It would appear that it's a pretty good size. But once I've got the rivets in uh, and everything, and also when I did my bit of research last night, um, I realised that there were several different sizes of wine bottles and some are quite big. I am going to go still stick with my original former, uh, which I'm going to bend the arms around. I'm going to do that in a minute. But uh, I'm also going to put a little bit of a bend here, and that's where we're going to have for uh, a little foot that I'm going to put in. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to flare the end of this foot up just a little bit, just make it look a bit more... Mm, I want to say aesthetically pleasing, but just make it look a bit more like I've done something with it as opposed to just bent up the foot and left it as it was. Uh, and then, um, and then I'm going to put it in the vise again, like I did this bend, I'm going to bend that one up. Okay, with a decorative item like... This piece here. You can basically do what you like. As long as it's obviously in keeping with your current style. So all I'm going to do here is I'm just going to tidy this up. Put a bit of a flare on the end and just make it look like I, I did this intentionally. Right, lovely. Now to bend it up. Getting good at not turning the camera on. Right, um, I've got a piece of angle iron in here which I am using to hold this and keep everything nice and square. Um, or at least trying to. It's a bit cold last time. So I'm just going to bend this down and using a hammer as well. This might. Um, might not go quite as well because I'm, I'm struggling for a bit of room. Right, I'm going to do the rest of this on the anvil. Wait, it's alive. I have had to crack out the steak anvil, which is, um, which no, you know it's going wrong when the crate, when the steak anvil's out. So just want to dress all these corners up. This, uh, this steak anvil wasn't originally from this, this anvil. I got it with my first anvil, which um, I had lent to a young man uh, who's still using it. He hasn't, um, he's only about 11, I think 12. He might be a bit older, he might be 12. But um, he's uh, he's borrowing it, uh, so I don't have the anvil that goes with this particular article. But it's uh, it sort of does its job still. Um, what I'm going to do at some point is reforge that that stake, uh, reforge this piece. 
one point, but we will get around to it. Okay, that's looking pretty good. I'm quite happy with that now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bend these pieces up now. Okay, so I'm not gonna go mad and go over every single element of this. Uh, I think um, I think most of you guys out, guys and girls out there get the, get the general gist of what I'm trying to achieve here. So um, I don't think it's necessary unless I can think of uh, a valid point to raise. I don't think it's really necessary for me to go into much detail as into what I'm doing. Uh, so I'll show you this bit here and then um, I'll move the camera so you can see a bit more of what I'm doing. And then um, I'll let you enjoy me working at something what I would like to work at if I could. <laughs> I'm also trying to keep these taper facing down so it gives it that aesthetic quality. Uh, but we're getting there, we're getting there. Okay, so this is the piece that's going to hold the vine glasses, and I am going to find about halfway. So these were 165 mil, so eight and a bit. Here we go. Oh, sorry, I'm going to go to eight because that just makes my life a bit easier, numbers wise. And again, these, this is an aesthetics preference, so wherever you feel is good, is good. I'm just going to take my centre dot, I'm just going to pop a little mark there, uh, wherever that's gone. I saw him, oh there he is, it's just on the floor. I'd lose me head if it weren't screwed on. Na, 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 na. Right. Just put a little centre dot mark there, and then one here, and... What I'm going to do is I'm going to take these, I'm going to clamp these in the vise again, I'm going to bend these down at 90, uh, and then once I've bent them at 90, these need to get uh, turned into rings. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to do this side first. Okay, so basically the same as before when we did the other bend, except from this time, I am just going to do it out of the vise. Only reason being is that um, it's getting in the way a little bit, the angle line. Bring this down. So, just to put a 90 in there, just going to tidy this up on the anvil face. Okay, so same again, except from, um, I'm just, uh, just going to let you see what I'm doing on the anvil as well. That's set dot mark, just there, and that nice and tight, bend that down. Using the hammer, just going to get that square, nice and square, like so. Try not to get in the way of the camera, chuck that on the floor, it's the best place for it really. And then, um, I'm just going to quench the body of this off. two pieces in like so. Now I'm going to get these in the end here into rings. Okay, so hopefully you'll be able to see this. Just walking this round. Like I said, I'm not great at this bending up the market. I get by. 
side though. Now, this gap here needs to be just big enough to fit a wine stem in. So uh, I'm gonna leave it at that. Um, and that looks pretty nice and round there. So I'm just gonna do the other one. Just this other side. I think it's called. Wait, I'm just going to. I hope you can see that. And finally, what I'm just doing is um, I'm taking these set of scrolling dogs um, and I'm just bending up the arms and sometimes it's best just to do things cold. I know you can't see that, but uh, I only need a little bit of a bend out and I, I don't want it to be crazy. Just give that a little touch there. Like so. Now I'm just going to straighten that up on the anvil and uh, we're done. For this part anyway. Okay, finishing. This is something that um, I think is overlooked quite a lot. Um, it's, there's no emphasis made on the qualities that finishing can give if um, it, can take, it can take something that can be forged very well and make it look very bad if you do finishing incorrectly. And I think a lot of people forget this element when they are making their pieces. What can and cannot affect um, your work uh, on an aesthetic level. It doesn't matter that it works right. Um, a hammer that's finished correctly with a nice polished face, even if that hammer is a rubbish hammer, at least a nice polished face on the hammer makes it look like you spent a bit of time on the finishing. And it gives it qualities that it otherwise wouldn't have had. So. We have our pre-finishing, which, uh, which is something that um, I think a lot of people do this, but they don't realise what they're doing. Um, um, and it's basically, um, you have three types of finish from the fire. You have the scale finish from the fire, which is an oxidised finish, uh, and that left on its own has a certain quality. You can see here with this piece that I've allowed to cool, looks ever so slightly different in colour from this piece. Um, I just quenched this just now. Um, and like this was probably being brushed as well as I haven't brushed this one so intently. Um, so the next stage is to take a wire wheel of some description. Now I like to use a wire wheel on an angle grinder. This is a cup brush. You can get the flat disc ones and all sorts. You can get them for drills. Um, I just like to go over the surface of the material and buff, um, and buff it up to a, a reasonably good shine. Um, or, or alternatively, you can sandblast or strip. And now sandblasting or stripping, uh, that comes in a couple of different forms. Sandblasting itself uses a particulate to uh, remove the scale, whereas um, uh, like an acidic strip, a pickle for example, uh, if anyone watches Michael Cthulhu, he does this a lot. Um, he, when he puts his swords in his vinegar bath, he basically gets an acid and strips the scale away so that when he works on his, uh, when he works on his projects, he's working on clean metal. Now, um, the scale finish will actually help protect against corrosion. So I don't want to lose the scale finish, but if this was going off to get galvanized, I don't think it's going to get galvanized, they first would send it to, um, they would send it uh, somewhere or they would have pickle baths. They would dip this in pickle, they would take it out of the pickle and then they would galvanize it. And if you were sending this to get painted uh, by a powder coaters, if they're not recommending galvanizing, they would almost 100% tell you to sandblast it. Because um, one of the problems with scale is it prevents paint from sticking. So if you are going to paint these, these need to strip, be stripped back to a somewhat reasonable finish. Right, that's all I have to say on that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the angle grinder, just going to give these a good wire brushing. Uh, and then um, I'm going to assemble them with the bolts, take the rivets, put the rivets in and get it all riveted together. I do have one slight problem. I do not have any uh, gas, uh, I don't have any oxygen, so I can't do these with the gas. I'm going to have to do them in the fire 
which could cause some slight complications. Right, I'm going to get on with these. I'll see you in a minute. Okay, I don't know if that was luck or, um, I, yeah, I don't know what happened there. Uh, I machined these little, uh, these little uh, rivets up uh, with quite a flat head uh, in order not to have a massive profile uh, by the uh, wine bottle. So what I've got here is these little machined up pieces and that riveted up quite nicely. Uh, so I'm going to do the same thing again um, and I just thought, well, I'll give it a go and see what happens. Um, Anyway, yeah, it worked, so I'm going to give it a go. Uh, I'm using the round inside of the hammer just to forge it down to get everything tight, and then uh, we're going from there. So I'm going to pop this back in the fire and give it another go. Okay, finishing. Uh, finishing is something that, like I said before, a little bit overlooked. Uh, for this, I'm going to be uh, applying some linseed oil. This is boiled linseed oil. Uh, it's a garden variety boiled linseed oil. It's not some branded one. It's just something I bought from a local DIY place. Um, and I'm going to apply this hot to the work. And as this cools down, the boiled linseed oil will dry reasonably hard, I say reasonably hard, uh, it's still quite tacky so if this is going to be in, an industri in a dusty environment I would suggest perhaps not using boiled linseed oil um, but it definitely does give a nice finish especially if you've got this um, forged finish look um, uh, with the scale still on. Now I need to reheat some parts of this because um, I've only heated up this end, so I'm going to put the other end in the fire and just a second and heat that up. But um, as a process, this is uh, it's quite nice. It's quite a nice finish. Um, it's reasonably cheap. Uh, you don't need much uh, linseed oil to do this. Um, it also, if you apply it in a, a fairly runny slapdash method, you can use a paintbrush to put this on. I'm using a bit of rack. Um, if you apply this a bit more um, slapdash, that's not the right word, uh, but heavily, it does run into all the cracks, nooks and crannies and stuff, which is quite nice. Uh, which definitely gives you the advantage of having um, a good finish. I'm just going to uh, keep putting this on. You could use uh, boot polish, beeswax, it's also a good option. Uh, you could paint this. Um, I think I'm doing the boiled linseed oil here because. I think I'm going to end up potentially working on this a bit more before it goes to its new owner. But um, I wouldn't like to, um, if I was going to paint this and then have to redo stuff to it. Um, if I was making lots of these, potentially painting would be a good idea. If these were going to go outside and stay outside, maybe even galvanising would be uh, a good idea too. Uh, but as it stands, this is just a small gift. 
what they call a reasonable size gift for someone, um, which um, I'm I'm making sort of like as a suspect project. Just going to warm this up again. Okay, I'm really stoked with this. It's come out really well. Um, hopefully you've enjoyed watching this process. Um, there are a few things. I'm not 100% happy with the fit of this bottle, but I'm gonna work on that. And also, I don't know what the wine glasses are gonna sit like. And I'm not so cool with this little hook that I put here. This little hook is to hold like bottle openers and corkscrews and stuff, and I was gonna make something to go with that. Uh, but as, a, as, a, as an item overall, I think it's pretty good. I am a bit concerned, I think, that this can come out of here. But whether or not that's going to happen, I don't know, because once it's in there, it's, uh, it seems in there, <laughs> but I don't know. It can, it can come through, which uh, isn't perfect, but um, I can sort it out. But the basic premise is, you stick it in the ground in the garden, um, you pop your bottle of wine in there, so it's just sitting next to it, you put your glass of wine, and then you take it and drink it, put it back. So. It's not supposed to be moved around that much. I'll put the handle on there so you could carry it, should you wish. Um, so hopefully you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've enjoyed this part series stuff. Uh, I'm gonna start doing a little bit more of this. Um, when I say a little bit more, probably from here on in, the only time I will do singular videos on one topic, or if I'm talking about something, or um, I'm making some tooling to go along with a project. Um, uh, I, I'm finding it quite difficult at the minute to keep up the momentum with all the editing and stuff um, to make videos uh, as singular ones. I know a lot of you guys have got a lot out of the tooling videos and I've really enjoyed doing them, don't get me wrong, um, but it is something that does take a lot of time. It is, um, and it, it is something that I'm finding a little bit frustrating at the minute. So I'm going to be doing more projects like this. There's this. Um, Obviously this project, um, there was the bottle opener, which was huge. I shouldn't have done two parts for that one really, it took far too long. Uh, the hydraulic press, we're going to be doing the leg vise. Um, and there's lots of other stuff coming, um, I promise. <laughs> uh, so yeah, hopefully you did enjoy it, like I said. So thank you for joining me, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Um, I've really, really enjoyed it. Um, if you have enjoyed it, remember to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you are a subscriber, remember to ring that bell for notifications. I try and put videos up on a Tuesday and a Thursday, and sometimes I do a live every now and then. Um, but uh, I haven't been doing that for a while because Ella's broken her foot and I have been absolutely stressed to the nines. But I think I'm going to do a live not uh, next weekend and just have a little bit of a chat with you guys to let you know what's going on. Um, yeah, I think that's everything. Oh yes, so um, I've been down here for about another hour or so on top, another hour and a half, so let's call it, um, I don't know, let's call it five and a half hours. So um, we'll talk about pricing on the live, I think, but yeah, five and a half hours and it's about 30 pound an hour in the workshop. I'll give you roughly an idea of what I have to sell it for, so um, that's not including materials. I think materials were somewhere in the region of, um, four pounds at the very most. So whatever you've got, plus four. So anyway, thank you for joining me. Um, I will leave a link up here to part one. I will leave a link down here to part two. This is my Patreon. Great way to support the channel. And this down here is the subscribe button. Thanks for joining me. Bye-bye. You can carry it and hold it. I don't, I don't think that's going to happen.